All right, so good afternoon. How are you guys? I was doing the whole bag, turned it into a brick. All right, well, good to know, good to know. Yeah, and, and once it once it solidifies again, it is so hard to like get it out of there. I ended up just um, just from the original rock candy that I made, I ended up just throwing the mason jar away. I was like, I'm not cleaning this up and just tossed it. <laughs> All right, so um, before we get started, let me go ahead and um, so yesterday when when I started um, class with the gold team, yeah, because you're blue team, um, there had been some miscommunication about which, um, hold on, let me admit these guys. Admit all. No, it's not supposed to be a brick. Yours won't be. Um, if you only added the six cups, um, she had her, didn't you add the whole bag? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what made it just super, super saturated. Okay. All right. So um, before before I start in with the with the lesson and things I want to do today, um, so there was a little bit of miscommunication with what materials you guys would need this week, and um, so you. Some of you got one yesterday in your delivery. You should have a second mason jar. So I think Paducah and Mayfield kids, I think you guys got a second mason jar yesterday in your delivery, but I don't think that Missouri kids have a second one. I'm not, I'm not real sure. Some people do, some people don't. I, again, there was, there was some miscommunication on the supplies that you guys needed this week. Um, so if you have a second mason jar, then you can um, make your lava lamp today with me. If you don't, it's no big deal. Um, we can, like I, I planned on taking time on Thursday to give you guys time to um, end up making that lava lamp. Okay, so yesterday's kids, none of them had a second mason jar. And so in class yesterday, I just kind of went through and talked about like the process and why we're doing the lava lamp and the science behind it and all that good stuff. Um, and so today I'll kind of do that same thing. Now, like I said, if some of you do have a second mason jar and you want to make it with me as I make mine, you're more than welcome to do so. If not, I've already planned to take some class time on Thursday so we can all make it together, okay? So you're still gonna have two projects this week. Like we're still doing one today and then your second one will be on Friday, but we're just kind of, we may have to do two on Friday instead of doing one today and one Friday, okay? But it's no big deal, not worried about it. It'll be just fine, okay? So yeah, if you've got your own mason jar at home, um, you can use it. I mean, there's nothing special about the mason jars. Um, you know, it's just a normal mason jar, but I don't want you guys, like I, I want your rock candy sitting in that mason jar. So don't, don't pour your rock candy out, you know, don't do anything yet with it, leave it sitting. Um, because I remember we're going to let that go for probably about a week or so and then um and then we'll take the rock candy out and let you eat it and talk about it and all that good stuff okay so if you have another sealable container something with a lid so if you have a mason jar at home and you want to use that today you're more than welcome like I said oh Fulton doesn't either again not a big deal that's fine um but if you don't have it um, then we will take class time on Thursday, or excuse me, on Friday um, to go ahead, because I want you guys all to have a lava lamp, okay? All right, so before we get, or now that we kind of got that taken care of, what I want to do now is, um, let me start sharing my screen. All right, so a couple of things, again, as we are, let me pull up the right screen. Okay, so you guys should be seeing, oh, hold on, hold on, let me tell my, that's my bass now, he's really loud, hold on. Well, if I could get to my controls. 
All right, hold on, time out. Okay, all right, so maybe they stop for a little bit. All right, um, so looking at the classroom, um, again, as we go throughout this month, I'm not going to have any like answer these questions or, you know, like any kind of discussions that we do with all the projects that we're doing. We're going to do those discussions together. So I won't ever have like a, um, hey, turn this in type situation as in like, um, you know, like answering the post lab questions. Okay. But what I do want for you guys to do throughout this month, um, throughout this program is I want to see pictures of your work. And so, um, hold on. Oh, okay. All right. Y'all are good. All right. Dwight, I'm about to tell you where, where the pictures go. Okay. So, um, so I'm going to have you guys upload pictures of your or of your projects because that's what I'm interested in seeing. I want to see what you guys are producing, what you guys are making. Okay. So again, all throughout this month, um, we will be taking class time to to make make the projects together in class. So if you do it with me during class time, awesome. Um, if you choose to do it at home on your own time. Remember, this is always being recorded, so you can always go back and watch it and redo it later if you need to, okay? Now, I'm putting due dates on all of the assignments. Honestly, the due dates are kind of arbitrary um, because, you know, maybe you didn't start rock candy or maybe, you know, maybe you didn't do rock candy until today. Well, then I need you to post a picture of your finished product today and then again on day four or whatever the case may be, okay? So um, just kind of keep that in mind as we go throughout this um, as we go throughout this program but I do most definitely want to see pro or pictures of your projects so with that being said if you look in the steam class section okay so last week Friday was your first class with me um, and we did the rock candy okay um, and then your assignment when we were done with class was to post a picture of your rock candy once you finish. So like day one, okay? And so again, here was a picture of mine. Um, and, you know, nothing special. I just wanted you to just take a picture so I could, uh, you know, so I could, I could see what you did, okay? Now... What I would like for you to do, you know, sometime today, tomorrow, whenever you get a second, I want you guys to post a picture of your rock candy from today. So this should be about day four. I mean, obviously, if you didn't do it until Saturday, maybe this is day three or or whatever. But your rock candy should be sitting there for three or four days at this point. So here is a picture of my candy. So you can see those crystals are starting to form. Um, and like I said, we're gonna let the rock candy go for about a week, maybe a week and a half. We'll just kind of play it by ear and see. Um, but you, you should see that rock candy. Um, also too, if you look here at the top, so you're not going to form just crystals on the actual skewer. I actually have crystals here on the top as well as on the sides and on the bottom. You can't see it in the picture, um, but you're going to form um, those sugar crystals kind of all over. So that's why when you when you suspend your skewer, you don't want it touching the edges or the bottom um, because those crystals will end up forming and, and holding the skewer in place. And it, it's really, really hard um, to get it out, okay? Um, if your crystal starts to get super big and you're afraid it's gonna touch the sides, you can go ahead and take it out um, and, and, and eat it if you want, like if you think it's gonna get stuck. But like I said, we're gonna let it go for about a week. So for today, 
I one assignment you've got kind of technically two assignments today but for today at some point I would like for you to upload a picture of what your crystals look like so far okay I got a couple chats let me read my chat um oh that's okay Taylor the candy is a huge clump yeah um I haven't looked at mine yeah Taylor that's fine just um whenever you get back to your mom's house send me a, or upload a picture again no rush you know when it comes to these like I, I put a due date oh yeah that's perfect I put a due date on all of your assignments um but it's not like I'm like you know taking off a late grade or whatever so it's you know it, it's kind of up to you on on just when you get it turned in I just want you to know that they are there um when you ooh, I haven't seen it from a student side to Kyra when you upload one I don't think I can see it from a student side let me I think once you click on the assignment there should just be like a see now that's going to show me your work does anybody have an answer for her possibly um yeah or like does your ipad or phone or whatever you're using have um have um oh what if we did a pro oh that's okay just as long as i've got one a couple days out okay all right any other questions are y'all good Okay. All right. Perfect. Okay. So as you can see, what we are doing today is making a lava lamp. Okay. So again, uh, Lily, I don't think so. I don't know when we, when I get done with class today, let me, um, we'll stay on and show me and show me your jar and let me take a look at it. Okay, and we might can fix it too. All right, so today we're gonna do lava lamps. Um, so again, if you have a second container or a second mason jar, go ahead, make a lava lamp with me today. If not, again, we will do it um, during class time on Friday, okay? All right, so let me pull up the assignment. And actually, I'm gonna share... I want to change my video here for a second. So stop sharing my screen. And so before we start, I, before we start with building our own lava lamp, I want you guys to take a look at a lava lamp that I have. Okay. All right. So I've had this lava lamp on for a few hours. I turned it on first thing this morning. Lava lamps do a lot better when they've been heated up for a little while, okay? So like I said, this lava lamp's been on um, since probably about seven, eight o'clock this morning. So it's pretty warm. Um, I just want you to kind of watch the lava lamp for just a second, okay? And so actually, let me scoot it a little closer so I can point things out. Let me pin my video pin. And okay, there we go. All right, so I want you to kind of pay attention to the motion of what's happening. So I'm going to get really technical and, and call these things blobs because, you know, I can't really think of anything else to call them. But if you notice when you look at this lava lamp, there are two different solutions in there. There is this kind of pinkish color solution that's kind of forming these little blobs. And then there's like a light purple solution that the blobs are actually in, okay? Now, this purple solution here, even though it looks like water, it's it's not water. It's it's It has water in it, but it's not just solid, clean water, okay? So, but... Like I said, I want you to just kind of watch the motions for a second. So you'll see this blob here, he's kind of moving down. And then here in just a second, you'll see kind of this blob right here. Now he starts coming up, moving up, reaches the top. And so you've got kind of this 
circular motion happening. So blobs will come up, blobs will come down, blobs will come up, blobs will come down. And as long as I have this lava lamp turned on, you will get this continuous motion of up, down, up, down, up, down. Okay. So you guys are going to be making your own lava lamp today. Um, but instead of powering it with a light bulb, we're actually going to power it with Alka-Seltzer tablets. But the exact same thing is going to happen. It's going to be kind of this convection or this rotating motion. Okay. All right. So let me pull up the lab and let's kind of talk about the materials that you're going to need. Share and go to OneNote. Okay, all right, so I've got the lab. Let me pull you guys over here. Okay, so again, your supplies, you may have a second mason jar, you may not, not a big deal, don't worry about it, okay? You'll for sure have one um, by the time you get your delivery for this week. Okay. All right. So you need a mason jar. Um, and last week with the rock candy, we didn't use the lid. You're going to actually use your lid um, this week with the lava lamp. Okay. So you're going to need a mason jar. Um, you're going to need a little bit of water. And so I just took another mason jar and put some water in there. But I'll tell you exactly how much you need here in just a little bit. Um, you also, in your supplies, you should have some vegetable oil. Also, you've got food coloring. Um, it's probably the same food coloring that you have from um, your rock candy last week. Again, purple's my color. I always have purple. Um, you should as well have some glitter. Glitter is completely up to you. Um, you can use the glitter, not use the glitter, whichever one you want. And we'll talk about when to add it here in a second. And then lastly, you should have some Alka-Seltzer tablets, okay? So like I said, the Alka-Seltzer tablets um, is what is going to power, what plate are you talking about? Um, the Alka-Seltzer tablets is what is going to power, watch out over here so I can see it. Going to power the lava lamp um, instead of using a light. Okay. All right. So let's have a little bit of a pre lab discussion before we uh, before we make our own. Okay. So there's a couple of different science topics that we're going to discuss. We're going to talk about polarity. Give us. Oh, that's okay. That's all right. We'll. We'll deal with, you'll need that on Friday. So we'll work with it then. It's not a big deal. Um, all right, so we're gonna talk about polarity. We're gonna talk about density and a little bit about chemical reactions, okay? All right, so after looking at that lava lamp, think about that circular motion that we had going on. Up, down, up, down, up, down, okay? All right, so as that motion was occurring, I want to talk about kind of why it was occurring. So the first conversation that I want to have is about density. So again, depending on depending on how far you are in your science classes, you may have discussed density already or you may not have. It's not a big deal. Um, for those of you that have had a discussion of density in school, can you guys tell me either maybe what the formula for density is or what kind of information you have to have in order to find density? Do you know what variables or, or what things I need in order to determine the density of something? You guys can type it in the chat or holler at me. Okay, so Lily said volume. I agree. There's one more. There's two things that we need to know. Volume's one of them. Do you know the other? Mass, perfect. Okay, oh, Rosie, you know that from me. Good girl. All right, so when you find density, Density is found by taking mass divided by volume. So the easiest way to think about mass 
is it's the amount of stuff that something is made of. Real technical term, right? But it's the amount of stuff. Volume is the amount of space that that stuff takes up, okay? So in order to find the density of something, I always take mass and I divide by the volume, okay? So two different variables. How much stuff do I have? How much space does it take up? So thinking about this lava lamp, and let me get the video back on and let you look at it again. So when you look at it, rear camera, okay. So when you look at the lava lamp, can you see it? Hope you can. Okay, so when you look at the lava lamp, you've got this motion of up, down, up, down. So you have two substances in here that have two different densities, okay? Now, I want you to pay attention to just the pink blobs. So the reason the pink blobs are in motion is because of the heat coming from this candle that or candle coming from this light bulb that's inside my lava lamp. So as this as this light stays on, it starts heating up these pink blobs. Well, here's where a little saying comes in that I absolutely love to use and that's called heat them up, speed them up. So what I mean by that is as you heat up molecules, they start moving. So what's happening inside this lava lamp is I'm heating up everything that's inside this solution. So as these molecules are being heated, the molecules are moving more and moving faster. Well, think about what that means in terms of volume, because their mass has stayed the same. I haven't added anything else to the lava lamp, but what I have done is change the volume, because when I heat up those molecules, they move faster. So when I add heat, that means that the volume or the amount of space that they take up increases because they start moving around and they start spreading out. So think about it mathematically. If I have density kind of set up like this mathematically, D is equal to M over V. And if I take this denominator and I increase its value. So for example, let's say originally maybe the denominator had a value of one, and now I change the value of the denominator to maybe three. I went from one to three. So what happens mathematically to density if I were to increase the amount of volume? Mathematically, what happens? If I increase by a larger number, what happens to your answer? What do you think? Don't be shy. Uh, think about it one more time. I, not my numerator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, Lily, good. So my density will end up getting smaller. So density decreases, good. So the reason the lava lamp works or the reason that, let me give you a visual again. Rear camera. There we go. All right, so the reason this lava lamp and the reason these move is because as these blobs are getting heated up down here, their density starts to decrease. In other words, they get lighter. And so that's what makes these guys float up to the top. Now, once they get up here to the top, stop sharing. Once they get up here to the top, well, now they're not right here on top of the light bulb anymore. They actually start to cool down. So as the blobs start cooling down, 
Well, now he starts sinking because now his density is getting larger. He starts sinking back down to the bottom. And so this cycle just continues to go, go, go over and over and over. So when you have a lighter density, you float. When you have a heavier density, you sink. And so as long as I've got this light bulb on down here in, in the base of the lava lamp, then this cycle will continue to happen. Now, if I were to take the lava lamp and turn it off, so, and I let this cool down, eventually all of the blobs will cool off and they'll all sink down to the bottom. And I'd have to turn the lava lamp back on to get this process to go again. Okay, so if something is more dense, it sinks to the bottom. If it is less dense, it floats to the top. Okay, any questions with density? All right, second concept I also want you guys to be aware of and thinking about is polarity. Okay, so we've talked about density, which is the science behind why do these float, why do these sink? Now, the second part I want to talk about is why don't these two solutions mix together? In other words, why are my pink blobs? I mean, look at them. They're, they're literally like a circular blob. But why don't these pink blobs mix with the purple, almost kind of watery liquid that's inside the lava lamp? Because even I can't because it's pretty warm. But even if I were to take this lava lamp and like shake it as hard as I can, they still will not mix together. The pink will stay separate from the purple. So when they are cold, they fall and repeat. Yes, perfect. Okay, so now I wanna talk about the science behind, okay, well, why are they two different things? And so in order to have that discussion, we need to talk about polarity. So polarity in its most basic form. Let me turn the video off so you're not just staring at the table. So polarity in its most basic form, think about it as the attraction of molecules. Okay, so the pink blobs are more attracted to one another than they are the purple solution and vice versa. The purple solution is more attracted to itself than the pink blob. So because of that, the solutions do not mix. So again, if I were to look at the lava lamp, if I were to look at the lava lamp, the pink blob is attracted to one another. The purple solution is attracted to one another because they have different densities. They also have different values of, or different degrees of polarity, I guess I should say. And so that's what makes this lava lamp not mix and how we get this cool kind of groovy flow about itself, okay? So two things we're looking at, density and polarity, all right? So any questions? Let's see. Yeah, Callie. Yep, I agree because oil is thicker than water and it won't mix. Perfect. All right. So now are there any questions on kind of the basics on why a lava lamp works the way that it does? Okay. Because again, with all of our projects, I always like to kind of go in and, and talk about, okay, well, why the heck does it do what it does? All right. So now we're ready to make our own lava lamp, okay? So again, if you have a second mason jar, you can go ahead and make your lava lamp with me. If not, and you get your other mason jar before Friday and you wanna go back and watch this video and make your own on your own time, you're more than welcome. If not, like I said, I'm also gonna take class time on Friday um, to to give you time to make the mason jar as well if you have questions okay taylor go for it i i don't want you to because actually we're going to do something with paint 
next week. So hold that thought. The, the, the food coloring is what you need to use for color today. Okay. But, but hold that thought with the paint. I like that. Cause I'm actually going to show you something else kind of taking lava lamp to the next level. Okay. Um, oh, you don't have any food coloring. Mm. You didn't have any from the rock candy. I bet I can, let me make a note. Oh, okay. Well, well, here's what you can do. The good news is, so keep your lava lamp um, and, and the food coloring can be added at any time. So you can go ahead and, and make it if you want and just, it'll be kind of a yellowish color. And then you can go back in and add some food coloring, okay? All right, awesome. Okay, so hopefully my document camera works today. It was being a booger and not working yesterday. Let's see if it's gonna come on. Oh, no, it's still not working. I'm, oh wait, let me try. Let me try one more thing. And if not, I'm just gonna use the camera on my surface. Oh, it's been a booger. Okay, no big deal. All right, so technology, technology. All right, so we'll just do it this way. Not a big deal. Okay, so like I said, need your mason jar. You do need the lid. First things first, we are going to add some water to it. And I'm gonna kind of just walk you through it. Um, and so remember you can pull up your lab cause there's not a lot of steps to it. Not near as much as, as rock candy. Um, so you can pull up your lab. Um, it, uh, if you're doing it on your own a little later, okay? But so you need your mason jar. You wanna fill it about a quarter of the way full. So if you turn your mason jar over to the ounces and the cup side, again, I know you can't really read that, but so you'll see numbers like eight, 16, 24, or one, two, three. So you wanna fill your water up to this line that says one or eight. So that's one cup or eight ounces, okay? Hey, Ms. Julie. Yeah. This is the Kyra. Um, I'm trying to turn in that assignment because I when I had did the, um, what's it called? The rock candy with you that day. Yeah. I took a picture of it the same day, but I'm trying to turn it in. It says, oops, there's an error. Please try it in. Um, you know what? Worst case scenario here. Let me. Mine did the same thing because I just tried to upload it because my mom sent me a picture, but it wouldn't let me. Well, I don't yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. I don't. All right. Well, here. Worst case scenario. Just send me the picture. I just typed in my email address. Just send me the picture to that email address and I'll do it that way if I need to. Does that work? Okay, yeah, let me cut it. I know, technology's terrible. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. And and I may have, honestly, I may have something screwed up. Like I may have the, I don't think I closed the assignment, but I may have, I don't know. I'll get on there and look. Um, but we'll, so try, try emailing it to me. If you guys still have problems, we'll, we'll figure it out, okay? All right, so I have, let me find which one was my mason jar with the water. All right, so you want to fill your mason jar up to eight ounces, one cup, okay? All right, so now with your vegetable oil, you want to fill it about three quarters of the way full. So on these mason jars, it's going to be right here at 24 ounces. You don't want to go all the way to the top. Um, so you kind of just want to fill it to where, you know, like the neck of the mason jar starts to get more narrow, but I just go right here to the 24 ounces. Okay. All right. So let me do that. And then I want to, I want to look at it for a second. All right. So once you get that oil added, so it should remind you a little bit of that lava lamp, 
okay? Now, obviously not near as pretty, but we're gonna take care of that. Um, but you should see that I've got the water settled down here at the bottom and I've got the oil up here at, top, at the top. So both concepts that we've talked about, number one, different densities. So my question to you is which one is, um, which one is less dense and why? Which one is less dense and why? How do you know that? Don't be shy. Of the two, oil or water, which one is less dense and how do you know? oil because it's floating. Exactly. So the oil is less dense because it is sitting on top. So less dense things or things with lower densities float to the top, heavier densities sink down to the bottom. Okay. So oil is less dense than water. Now let's say I were to get crazy. I put the lid on and I want the two to mix. Like I'm going to give it all my might. Give it a good shake. So here, I mean, that's looking pretty good. Okay, it's looking like it's mixed up. Well, let's just leave it sitting for a minute or so. Taylor says, it'll never mix. I couldn't agree more. What concept have we talked about that kind of explains why it will never mix? Different densities and what else? What else did we talk about? Just density. Also that polarity, okay? So again, the oil molecules, think about them as, as, as two separate things. You've got oil molecules and water molecules. The oil molecules are more attracted to one another. In other words, they wanna stay together. The water molecules are also more attracted to one another. So the water stays on one side, or excuse me, I had oil on this side. So the oil stays on one side here, the water stays on one side here. So they remain separated and do not mix. So as you can see, they are starting to separate back out. I've got the water, you can kind of see the, the different colors of the solution. I've got water settling down to the bottom because again, it is more dense and I've got oil here on top, okay? All right, so while that's settling, I wanna actually, hold on. I want to, Go ahead and, and keep going, all right? So let me add some more oil to this one, my side jar. All right, so next step I wanna do is now add in some food coloring to now give it a little bit of color, okay? So I've got my two solutions separated, oil, or excuse me, oil up here at the top, water at the bottom. So I'm gonna add in some food coloring. Um, you want to add about eight to 10 drops, okay? Now, as I add the food color, I'm going to have it here in front of the camera. I really want you to watch and see what happens to the food color, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. All right, so again, great discussion of density. So you saw the food coloring go through the oil, but sit, you can see the purple food coloring in there, sit on top of the water. That's because the food coloring is more dense than the oil, but still less dense than the water. Now, pay attention to the food coloring for a second and watch and see what happens. It may take it a minute, but let's watch and see.
Oh, come on. There it goes. All right, did you see that? It'll start kind of going all at once. So it's almost like the food coloring kind of had like a mini explosion. Let me turn it. You'll see another one go. So they're still kind of, you see the balls of the food coloring. It's still balled up kind of in that blob form. And so it'll start to almost kind of explode and you'll see it kind of explode. There it goes, kind of explode into the water. Okay. Again, that has to do with the polarity. So that food coloring kind of is attracted to one another as it's sitting in between the oil and the water. But once it kind of sits there for a little bit, um, it actually becomes a little more attracted to the water. And that's what gives it that kind of exploding effect. Okay. Now, um, I believe it was Taylor. I can't remember who it was, but someone asked earlier about paint. And so we're actually going to kind of use this explosion concept next week um, and, and make um, almost like exploding fireworks inside a jar. So that'll be kind of cool to see. Okay. All right. So I've got my food coloring added. Yeah, I thought it was Taylor. I couldn't remember. Now I'm going to add glitter to my food color or to my lava lamp. You may not want glitter. Or you can use glitter, whatever's up to you, but you know, who doesn't love a little bit? little bit of sparkle in their life. So I'm going to add some glitter. All right. So we now have our lava lamp. And so you can see the glitter just sitting there on top. So the lava lamp is completely constructed. Now, again, traditional lava lamps use heat to get those molecules spread out and to get them flowing. Well, we're not going to use heat. What we're going to use instead is Alka-Seltzer tablets. So Alka-Seltzer tablets are a chemical reaction. And in that chemical reaction, what happens is we produce gases. We produce bubbles. So when we drop these Alka-Seltzer tablets in, we're going to start producing carbon dioxide gas at a very high rate. And so again, it's all about that volume. So as we produce these gases, it's going to cause these molecules to move around to spread out more. And so we're going to get that same motion or that same circular momentum that we got with the um, with like the original lava lamp. OK, so what I want to do, um, you should have two Alka-Seltzer tablets in your package. So I'm going to take both of them and break them in half. Drop them in the lava lamp, but then you also want to put your lid on. Don't leave it unsealed. Actually put your, ah, actually put your lid on, okay? All right, so hold on. And then once I get the lid on, I'll, I'll hold it back up to the camera pretty quick. Give me a second. Okay, so I've got my Alka-Seltzer tablets. Like I said, I'm going to break them in half just to kind of Give it a little more action. All right, so I'm gonna drop them in, put my lid on, and then hold it up so you guys can watch. So you see bubbles starting to form. Now, as those tablets, they're down here at the bottom, as those tablets really start to dissolve, you'll see the lava lamp really go into action. And so again, we've got that, hold on, let me turn my light off maybe. We go that's better so you've got that action of the up down up down kind of convection happening so you've got your lava lamp going now um you can once the once the um all of the tablets dissolve the lava lamp will stop that motion and it'll settle. So you'll have your purple um water down here at the bottom oil on top now if you want to do it again, you can just continue adding Alka-Seltzer tablets over and over and it'll work for as long as, long as you have the Alka-Seltzer tablets, okay? All right, so lava lamp. Again, happens because of density, polarity, and then the chemical reaction that we have happening is that production of that gas going over and over, okay? All right, so what I want you to do, let me share my screen and pull up Google Classroom. All 
All right, so I've got a couple of things. You know that I like to do, move you guys over here. You know that I like to do some post-lab discussion questions. Um, I'm actually gonna wait and do these on Friday with you guys because I want, um, it'll, hold on Lily, let me pull you over here. Um, it'll still, it'll work the exact same way. It's just now your water would be down at the bottom where the lid is and then your oil would be on top. Um, so it may be mixed up at first, but then after you let it settle, it'll keep going, okay? And you're more than welcome to try that. All right, so here on your, post lab discussions. Um, I'm actually gonna wait and do these in class on Friday, because like I said, I want you guys, I want you guys to have the opportunity to make your lava lamp first um, before we go through and we talk about the questions. So I know you, you saw me make mine, but again, I like for you guys to get your hands dirty and you do that. So we'll, we'll do that Friday once all of you guys have your supplies. Okay. So just kind of hold off on those and we will revisit those. Now, second thing, so your actual like assignment that you need to turn in for me, um, if you look in the Google Classroom, and again, if you've made your lava lamp today, you can do it today, or you can wait and do it at the end of the week, doesn't matter. Um, but what I want you guys to do is to upload a short video of your lava lamp in action. Okay, um, and again, since this is a STEAM class and we add art into it, um, if you're feeling really creative, I would love for you to play a song in the background of your video. Um, I mean, and you can even like make a short little like TikTok and upload the TikTok. Like I've, I've had students do that before in my in my um, regular like school classes. Um, but I would love for you to play a song that, I don't know, just kind of comes to your mind or something that's like, oh yeah, that, you know, that reminds me of my lava lamp um, with your video. So I have an example in the assignments. I'm gonna go ahead and play mine. Um, I doubt a lot of you is, I don't know, is Mrs. Cox still in the room or not? She'll know the song, but a lot of you may not, which is fine, not a big deal, um, but this was what came to my mind as I watched my lava lamp, so let me play my video for you guys. So um, hopefully you could hear that. I had it on my computer speakers, um, but that's actually Prince's song, Purple Rain. Yes, I'm a big dork, but my lava lamp was purple and I was like, oh my gosh, yes, that just reminds me of Purple Rain. So again, I want you guys to have a little bit of fun with it. So, you know, any song that comes to your mind, I would love for you to upload a video um, and... Uh, let me think. You may want, I wouldn't add it all, Taylor, because you may want some glitter for a couple more projects that we do. Um, so reserve some of your glitter. Okay. Don't use it. Don't use it all. Um, but yeah, so upload just, and you saw my video was 27 seconds. Like it doesn't have to be anything crazy. Um, and if you can't figure out how to do music, you don't have to, but you know, I, I think it, it makes it a little more fun when you kind of add a little something extra to it. Okay. All right. So if you've got your lava lamp and you want to go ahead and make it and, and take care of your video today or tomorrow, you're more than welcome. Again, you know, miscommunication on the supplies, but you will have another mason jar um, and be able to make this at least by the end of the week, okay? Does, oh, look at that. Yay! Oh, that blue color is pretty. All right, so does anyone have any questions?
All right. Well, if not, like I said, class is kind of shorter today because I, we didn't do the discussion questions, um, but we will knock those out on Friday after all of you make your lava lamp. Okay. All right. So um, you guys are more than welcome to go ahead and hang up. I will see you in class on Friday. Okay. All right. Bye guys. Y'all have a good day. I'll see you Friday. Miss Shelley.